you are in, I want you to understand that your obedience is able to move the heart of God. God can move in a situation of a person that lives in obedience in a very, very big way. God can move and you know he always moves in supernatural ways that nobody can comprehend. And the scripture says after Abraham had made effort to obey the word of God, regardless of the fact that he was, he was asked to give his only son, that demand was unusual. That demand was just so weird that nobody could comprehend God asking him of his only son that he loves and cherishes. He's waited for that child for a long time. But the Bible says he went ahead and gave that son. And the moment he was about to put a knife in that child's life, the Bible says God spoke through an angel. And he said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, do not put that knife into the life of your son. Why? Because you have shown me that you obey me. You have shown me that you can trust me for provision. And you have shown me that you truly believe in that which I speak at every instance. And the Bible says, God made a big promise to him. And he said, through your offspring, all nations of the earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. This is the very first time the word obey is used in scripture. 
This is the very first time the word obey is used in scripture. And in the Hebrew, the word obey would stand for the word shama. And the word shama simply means to hearken diligently. In other words, to hear and act on that which you have heard. In other words, to hear and be able to do something about what you have heard. Many of us, as Christians as we may be, we obey by just hearing and don't do anything about what we have heard. And so James put it this way. He says, do not just be hearers of the word, but also be doers of the word. Why? Because hearers are limited in as far as their depth with the relationship of God is concerned. Hearers are limited in what they can access in the presence of God. But doers are able to access so much from the presence of God. And we see the manner of blessing that Abraham received. So here we are able to see how important the concept of obedience is to God. It is so important that even as we obey God, so much will begin to happen. Obedience, I said, positions uh, for the supernatural. So whenever we obey, we are putting ourselves in a place where God can meet us, where we can interact with God, when, where we can commune with God, where God's nature becomes our nature. Because when God spoke in the book of Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says whatever he said, it came to pass. Whatever he said, it happened exactly like that. That is the nature that a man carries. That is the nature that a man taps in whenever he learns to obey God. Let me just further add to our definition of the word obey or obedience. Obedience, as I said, is positioning oneself under someone by submitting to that authority and command. Obedience is positioning oneself under someone by submitting to their authority and command. Now, I want to state further to say that biblical obedience to God simply means to hear, to trust, to submit, to surrender to God and His Word. Biblical obedience simply means to hear, to trust, to submit, to surrender to God and his word. In other words, when we hear and trust and submit and surrender to God and his word, we are able to act on what God has spoken. Regardless of circumstances, we are able to act on what God has spoken. Throughout the Old Testament, the word obey is used. It is used. It is used. And many times it is used in order for men and women to experience the blessings of God. And the opposite of obedience is disobedience. And whenever men or women disobey God, they suffer the consequences of disobedience. But today I'm not talking about disobedience. I'm talking about obedience. I'm talking about obedience and the power of obedience. People of power people who rule and dominate in their spiritual lives who rule and dominate in their situations must be people who have positioned themselves under the authority and power of the word of god and to submit under the authority and power of the word of God is to be able to carry out the commands of God. And anybody, anybody who carries out the commands of God does not lack. Anybody that carries out the commands of God does not lack. Why? Because when somebody carries out the commands of God, prosperity is assured. When somebody carries out the, the, the commands of God, you know, abundance is assured. When somebody uh, carries out, you know, the commands of God, you know, safety is secured. Uh, many times people are living in secure lives because there is no obedience to the commands of God. People who 
obey the commands of God, who obey the word of God, they have power to even command the situations and situations obey. Now, the Bible clearly states to us that there was a man called Jesus Christ in the New Testament. And this man came by obedience to the Father. He came in obedience to that which the Father had commanded and requested him to do. So he lived on earth a life of obedience. Every day, every time, whatever he had to do was in line with what the Father had told him to do. And we see that this man Jesus did not fail in anything that he attempted to do. Whether it was praying for the sick, whether it was praying for uh, food for people to eat in abundance, whether it was praying for money to pay taxes, you recall at a certain instance when he asked the disciples and said, go to the river because taxes are needed and I have to submit to the authorities of the day. So I will pay taxes, but I don't have money here. Go in the, you know, to the river and then you will catch fish and in the mouth of the fish you catch, there will be you know, a coin. Bring it and pay my taxes. Why was he able to do all those things? It is because obedience is transferable. Obedience is transferable. A person who obeys is able to command anything and it will obey him. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 27 that the day came when Jesus was on the, uh, in the boat with the disciples on the sea. And uh, the wind blew and the storm raged. And at that particular time, the Bible says Jesus was asleep in the boat. And the disciples didn't know what to do because they had not learned obedience at all. Many times people who have not learned obedience live in despair. They live in in. in, 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 in in distress they don't ever have authority to command situations and people who have no obedience they live in fear fear of the unknown fear of even a crotch or roach falling from the the roof they would they would be scared because they don't have the capacity in them to command anything but look at this what happened in the sea the disciples started crying and they cried to Jesus Christ. They cried to Jesus and Jesus Christ woke up and he said, Oh, ye of little faith, for how long will I be with you? Brethren, the principles are simple. What you don't obey will not work for you. Your obedience will always bring forth a reward. When you obey, God will come through for you. When you obey, God will be able to work for you. The devil has no ability, has no power whatsoever to be able to penetrate through the life of a man or a woman who lives in obedience. If ever the devil penetrated, it is simply because God permitted it for a purpose. Not because the man has failed. It is clear to note in scripture that when Jesus Christ when Jesus Christ got up from the sea, he commanded the sea. He commanded the sea. And the storm obeyed him. And it came down. The very obedience he had with the Father, that's the obedience which was transferred into him and through to command nature. Your situation, whatever it is, is begging for your obedience your situation whatever it is no matter insurmountable or how big or how or the magnitude of your situation the key is obedience if you live in obedience you can command anything and it will hear you the bible tells me in first kings chapter 17 that when time came in verse 2 when time came for god to speak to elijah he commanded him to live and elijah obeyed and where he went things happened in verse 8 in the same chapter verse chapter 17 he commanded him again to go somewhere else and uh, things happened 
Why? Because when you live in obedience, it is easy to have power over what resists you. When you live in obedience, it is easy to have power over your enemies. But if you live in disobedience, your enemies will always overpower you. The Bible says the Israelites, whenever they sinned because of disobedience, they ended up being ruled by their own enemies. Their enemies triumphed over their life. My brother and my sister, I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what you've been crying about. I pray and appeal to you that may you go back and examine your life. Examine your level of obedience. Examine your level of obedience. When you obey, you, you carry exactly the same authority that the higher authority carries. When you obey, you carry the same authority. If the president of a particular country sends you and you obey the instruction, wherever you will go, you will go in the power of that particular president. So the power of the president has been transferred into you. Now the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that we are ambassadors of Christ. If we are ambassadors of Christ, then we are a direct representative of Christ. And if we have lived in obedience, like Christ lived in obedience, there is no power that will resist us. There is no power that will stand in the way. Why? Because when you obey, you carry exactly the same authority that the higher authority carries. I pray that as you listen to me, you will be able to run through your life and do a search of your own heart and see where you are in the area of obedience. Maybe you disobeyed when you were going into marriage. Maybe you disobeyed God when you were going into business. Maybe you disobeyed God when you were going into that job. Many times, even our intuitions can be used by God to help us see that what we are engaging in to is dangerous. What we are trying to do is not right before God. But many times we choose to disobey. There is what we call an inner voice in every Christian, in every child of God. And many times we have this inner voice in us which says there is no peace in what you are doing. How about abandoning? How about letting it go? How about forgetting about it? But we keep going that direction as though there is nothing that we have heard. May I submit to you but check your life and you will see exactly where you missed it and begin to obey and pick up the pieces and God will surely bless you. No one carries power unless they are under someone's authority. All the men and women of the Bible, whether it be in the Old Testament or New Testament, they were under authority. If you are not submitting to any given authority, there is no way you can have power on anything. If you look at the life of a Christian, our authority is the word of God. Our authority is God through our Lord Jesus Christ. But if we go against the word of God, if we go against Jesus Christ, then we know we are setting up ourselves for times of a crisis, for difficult times, for challenging times, which we will not be able to handle. Let me submit to you, according to Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8, that the Bible says of Jesus, that though he were a son, yet learnt the obedience by the things which he suffered. He learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Let me give you a little illustration. When you read the Bible, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45, the Bible there refers to the first Adam and the second Adam. The Bible says in Genesis that there was Adam, and that's the first Adam. Now this first Adam failed to obey God and threw every one of us into the situation that we are in. The sinful life that we see going on began, began with one man, and that was Adam. But let me also help you see something here. There is a difference between the first Adam and uh, the second Adam. And the difference is obedience. Why? Because Adam was created already grown up. 
So he never had an opportunity to grow and experience what every other born child can experience. He was made and came up as a, a grown-up man. So he never learned you know, obedience at all. He never learned. Obedience can be learned. And sometimes we learn obedience to the things we suffer. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8 that though Jesus Christ was a son, yet he learned the obedience by the things which he suffered. So Adam found it very easy. He didn't learn anything, but he was commanded. It was difficult for him to obey the instructions because he had not learned anything at all. This simply means that the difference between first Adam and the second Adam is barely obedience. But how did the second Adam obey? It is because he learned obedience through the things he suffered. He was born like a baby and he grew up and lived in society like anybody else. And he understood how to live with men. He faced challenges like everybody else. But Adam was brought out in a vacuum. He had nobody to challenge him. And two, he had a wife brought before him. We don't know how long it took before he could be given a wife. So he had a life where he was all alone. Oh, every time it was God and him. But now, that did not give him an opportunity to learn obedience. And so he failed because he never learned obedience. But the second Adam did not fail. No matter what came before him, no matter the temptations that the devil brought, he never failed. He had learned obedience. He had learned obedience. And that is the difference between the first Adam and the second Adam. Have you learned obedience in your life through the things you have suffered? When you look at what you suffered, some of you just don't want to talk about it and you don't want to learn from what you have suffered. You don't want to sit down and think about those things. What really made you to suffer the way you suffered? Could it have been your decisions? Could it have been your, your, your hurriedness or your hastiness or your being in a hurry to make certain decisions? Your impatience, so to speak. Could it be that? Or could it be that your friends influenced you to go in a certain route, that you did things that you were not supposed to do? Could it be that maybe you were just deceived? You were just deceived by the enemy. You have to sit down and evaluate your own life in order to understand where did I go wrong. So obedience is key. Obedience is key. Abraham positioned himself for the supernatural by obeying. He positioned himself. In these last days, God is prepared to do supernatural things in the life of believers. If you are listening to me and you are a minister of the gospel, I would like to urge you that you begin to obey every bit and piece of scripture. Because the Bible says there is nothing in scripture that can drop to the ground without fulfilling that which God has intended. May I request that if you have been listening to me and you have not received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to pray this prayer and please open your heart and accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I know I'm a sinner. I repent of my sin. Forgive me today. Help me to live a holy life. Come into my heart. Give me a new life. In Jesus' name. If you've prayed that prayer, you are born again. You are transferred from darkness to light. You are destined for heaven and not hell. May I also conclude by praying for each one of you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for my listeners. Regardless of the situations they are in, may you, our oh God, come through for them in a special way. I pray, Jehovah God, that wherever they are, whatever the situation, as your children have heard the word and chosen to go the route of obedience, may you, our oh God, come through for them because they are basically preparing themselves and positioning themselves for supernatural things. May the supernatural be the portion of their lives. May miracles begin to happen in their lives. May that which hindered them, hinder them no more. May every obstacle of their life be taken out of the 
aware. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you very much for listening. This has been your brother and friend, Bani Mulenga, with uh, the moment of inspiration and encouragement. God bless you until next time.